Oh, this is huge. We actually had Toast, this guy's Toast, record some vocals. Toast is the soprano of the choir. He's on top, and then TJ is the rest of the sections supporting him. Bruh. The art is so cute. Just, just look at this. Look at me. That's me. That's me! What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to share something really special with you guys. I had a song with Lily Peacher come out on Halloween this year called If There Was a Zombie Apocalypse, I Let My Dog Eat Me. If you guys haven't heard it, you should go check it out right now and then come back to this video and continue watching this one because you're going to want to watch this one. All right, go. Okay, welcome back. Let's get into it. So in case you didn't know, Lily Pichu is one of the biggest streamers on Twitch. She's a fantastic musician and voice actor, founding member of Offline TV, and she can spit mad bars on the fly like it's nothing. Yeah. You're washed up. You're like the ocean. You have trouble expressing simple emotion. Yeah, your glasses, they don't even fit your face. So why don't you sit down and know your place? She's also the owner of Temi, the cutest Pomeranian dog that boasts more shares of her love and affection than even Michael Reeves. One day, on some normal stream, she completely improvised a little tune that went like this. If there was a zombie apocalypse, I'd let my dog eat me. The situation's dire and my house is on fire, but at least I'd cheat be healthy. After some time, I put up a video on my channel called Streamers React to Pokey Pokey, which featured her reaction to my song. And she actually commented on the video and said collab with me, which got me really excited, of course. Now, it didn't end up happening for a little while, but then enter TJ Brown. TJ's been a very good friend of mine for almost 10 years, and he just so happens to be close with Lily as well. For months, he was telling me about this idea about producing out this really silly, gruesome love song about Lily's dog and to be honest at first I wasn't really sure if it could be pulled off so we sat on it for a while until I came across a good reference track called Cradles by Suburban. Hush. If you've heard it you know it has this really dark tone and feel to it and actually has a really cool drop that honestly goes in like it's it's a lit drop but the thing is that it features you know very simple instruments that you'll find in Lily's music all the time a music box a Celeste, even a triangle. So once we figured out our North Star, we started production about halfway through October. At first, it was just me and TJ just jamming out in the studio. And on day one, we got most of the drop. The drop was the first part that we worked on. So I'll show you guys that first. Uh, I'll just solo the drum bus so you guys can check that out. Here are the hats. The hats work really well. I have some snaps that come that go throughout the rest of the song. And then uh, but there's only one main snare. It's a pretty big snare. I didn't want to fill up the, the frequency range too much with layers of snares. Because there's already so much going on. And then we got some toms here that kind of double the cello sound. This is just some percussion loop I got from Splice. This is in the verse as well. And it kind of sounds like a skeleton, like if it was being put together and stuff. Let's move on to the harmony bus. The first part we came up with was the main music box line, which goes like this. Just some library I found on contact. Processed a bunch, compressor, two reverbs, decapitator. If you guys want to see the settings in here. I mean, it's nothing too crazy, it's just some drive. The next part we came up with was the 808 sub, which sounds like this. It's a very simple line if you look at it here. This is all it is, really. But what makes it cool is the pitch wheel that I used. So here's the automation, uh, the pitch automation. This is what makes it cool. And then just put a bunch of effects on it. Decapitator is what makes it really gritty. So you can hear it better on systems that don't have as much sub, like small headphones and your phone as well. This part's cool. This is basically just the music box again, playing thirds. Just like that. It helps fill the, the creepy like skeleton vibe 
for me. I know it's not skeletons, it's zombies, but it's all in the spirit of Halloween. Um, what else do we got here? Um, we have the music box, but this one's a little bit more reverby and feels like a synth. What the really cool effect on here is uh, the RC20. It's adding all these like kind of like warbly, wobbly sounds. Obviously, the a big part of the drop as well is the vocal. The vocal part it goes like this. This is Lily. It was TJ at first. I thought it would be more appropriate for Lily to be the one doing this. And it sounded better after I did all this stuff to it. This is similar to what I did in Pokey Pokey with automation. Lots of things being automated here. Pitch is flying up and down, um, as well as the formant and a little bit of the pan. There's a lot of effects here. EQ, compression, compression, de Little Otto Boy, which is the thing that's being automated the most. Again, here's the plugin in case you have forgotten what it looks like. Then we got another EQ, uh, Saturn for more distortion and saturation. And then we have a reverb, a multi-band compressor, and finally another RC20, which just doesn't add wobble, a little bit of the magnetic um, knob, as well as some a little bit of air distortion. This is just like light distortion, like kind of like higher frequency distortion. Obviously, we have a couple of harmonies in the drop as well. If there was a zombie apocalypse. I actually ended up synthesizing these. I had harmonies, but I liked the idea of synthesized harmonies in the drop instead because that makes it feel a little bit more in line with the drop lead. Oh, this is huge, actually. There's like a choral section in the middle of the drop. At first, it was just TJ for a long time, and this is what it sounded like. There's like four different harmonies in there. But we actually had Toast, Disguised Toast, record some vocals. So he sent me that. I took a bunch of the different takes and stacked them. And then this is what he sounds like. All together, TJ and Disguised Toast. Toast is the soprano of the choir. He's on top. And then TJ is the rest of the sections supporting him. Once we had most of the form outlined and the drop filled out, we sent it to Lily, and this is basically how our conversation went. <laughs> for context, it took me two months to finalize Pokey Pokey. And for this project, we only had two weeks. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was super down to make it happen. But the only thing was that I was moving on the 25th and that wasn't exactly going to speed up the process. However, I knew that a Halloween release was perfect for the song and I couldn't pass up a chance like this. So the night before I moved, I invited Lily and TJ over and we recorded the vocals. Oh my god. It was a super fun session. Lily is a huge bundle of energy off stream, just like she is on stream. And she's honestly hilarious. Just check out these outtakes. Breathe, breathe, breathe. I spit all over this thing. Be healthy. I wish there was a zombie apocalypse. I'd be a cool zombie. Hope you had no plans today. <laughs> oh, you're moving. We have whole new Lily soundboard. Good luck on your move. Thanks. Moving is stressful. Harry Potter. I'd start, I'd start, I'd start, I'd start. Bruce, John, ah. She's also a much better singer than she'd probably give herself credit for. Lily's really good at being consistent with her rhythm and her pitch. So that made things like stacking harmonies really easy. Think I'm losing my eyesight. I've been here all night. And we also stacked the chorus like crazy. If there was a zombie apocalypse, I'd let my dog eat me. And by the end of it, all three of us got up together and sang gang vocals like a bunch of zombies. If there was a zombie apocalypse, I'd let my dog eat me. There are zombies full of lead and my friends are all dead, but at least she'd be healthy. At the end there, we couldn't really decide how we wanted to sing it, so I just told them that we'll just do it all at the same time and then it'll be really thick. It didn't end up sounding too perfect in the end, but you know, it's fine. It's okay, they're gang vocals. After the session and after I moved, I got my setup back up and running and I basically no life the production over the next six days until it was ready for release on the 31st. Meanwhile, the super talented Smoke Deal and Sayart had been working on the video hardcore with Lily and I had no idea until the day before. 
and it was animated above and beyond what we initially thought, given the time frame. So huge shout outs to them, as well as Indra for coming in with the last minute thumbnail. It was a huge honor to be able to work on this song with Lily and so many other talented people, and I really am looking forward to the time when we get to do it again. Thank you guys for watching and for listening, and I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like and subscribe, because I got way more plans coming for you guys. Okay? Peace! Oh, 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 oh